How's it going guys? It's your boy King and welcome back to the channel for my episode 2 review of Dragon Ball Daima. Now this will contain spoilers just so you're aware. Now let's get straight into it. So starting things off we get a pretty hilarious opening scene with Shenron, King Goma and Degasu. So following off the back of the previous episode, Goku and gang all get turned into kids. That is the first wish from King Goma. So naturally, there are two more wishes to go. Although Shenron states that he's not willing to grant an additional two wishes, surprisingly. And he states that it's due to the fact that he's not familiar with Goma and Degasu. You know, he's never met them before. He hasn't built up any sort of a relationship with them. And that for newbies using the Dragon Balls, they only get one wish. And those that he's familiar with, you know, such as Goku and Gang, who he's met multiple times. He's built up a good relationship with them. They've made a ton of wishes. People he's familiar with, they get three wishes. But newbies using the Dragon Balls, they only get one wish. Now, that is kind of a good rule, you know, in that... Those that he doesn't know, he doesn't trust, they only get one wish. Although to be honest, it would be better if the rule was, you know, not to grant any wishes to evil people. <laughs> that would be a safer bet. But I guess this is good as you can get as, you know, safeguarding against bad people using the Dragon Balls, maybe. And, you know, I did kind of predict this in my episode 1 review in stating that I thought that there would be a spanner in the works in terms of King Goma getting his second and third wish. Although I didn't think it would go like this, you know. <laughs> I thought perhaps there would be some sort of interruption like the Supreme Kai showing up or somebody showing up to interrupt them from using the final wishes but I guess I was partly right. And yeah, Goma's not happy with this and he asks his friend Neva Dynamic from the Demon Realm if he can do something about it. You know, he asks him if he can use his Namekian powers to do the trick that he did before to restore the Dragon Balls, but I'm afraid he cannot do it another time not in such quick succession anyway so what then happens is that they essentially kidnap Dende who's been turned into a baby and I mean Mr Popo puts up a minuscule fight but can't really do much about it so you know we know Mr Popo is pretty much weak in comparison to these characters and Popo is also a kid as well so they take Dende to essentially hold them as leverage and then they shoot off back to the demon realm and following this we go back down to earth and we see the reaction from Goku and company we get some pretty funny reactions from Goku, Vegeta, Master Roshi, Piccolo, Bulma, Chi Chi you know all reacting to them being turned into kids and some were really funny you know as you'd expect people like Chi Chi and Bulma happy to be turned into kids because you know they're youthful they got lovely smooth skin now Krillin wasn't so happy about it <laughs> you know and some even poked fun about him being so small and Krillin you know is genuinely a small person but I think the funniest reaction had to be Master Roshi <laughs> like seeing Master Roshi react to himself being young was just hilarious you know he was even trying to chat some of the girls at the party and yeah, I just found Master Roshi hilarious still. And I did find it quite weird, the interaction between Goten and Trunks, who were babies. You know, they were seemingly talking to each other, but seemingly telepathically. After all, you could hear them talking to each other, but you know, their mouths weren't moving, their lips weren't moving. So it seems like they could interact with each other like telepathically and babies, which I thought was kind of weird, to be honest. <laughs> So after all of this, Goku, Supreme Kai, Kabito and Piccolo go up to Kami's lookout to figure out what's going on. Once they arrive, Mr. Popo explains everything that happened and as you'd imagine, all the cast are shocked and it seems like Supreme Kai is sweating the most and he actually explains his connection to the demon realm stating that yes he indeed did originally come from the demon realm and once it was revealed that Dende was kidnapped Goku was really anxious to go and save him but it is revealed by Supreme Kai that there's no way of getting to the demon realm through natural means you know you can't fly there they can't use their instant transmission there 
the only way to get there is via a special spaceship just like the one we saw King Goma come in and Supreme Kai reveals that he also has a similar spaceship which he came from the demon realm in and so he asks Kabito to go fetch it from the land of the Kais which he does but it turns out the spaceship I mean it is super old he did use it when he first came over and in addition to that it's seriously beat up and it just essentially isn't in working order but Goku suggests that they get hold of Bulma being the super genius that she is to help fix the spaceship and so Kibito goes and fetches her and comes over with Vegeta and Bulma essentially gets to working on the spaceship and she states that it will take up to 10 days to fix the spaceship. Now in the meantime a few days pass and Goku and company are essentially getting used to their bodies but unlike in GT when Goku got turned into a kid this time around it was completely different this time around it wasn't so easy to deal with their bodies while being kids they were struggling they stated to deal with the balance of being kids so in the meantime mainly Goku was training trying to get used to his new body but he was still really struggling and he decides that what would help is if he goes and fetches his old handy power pole so he goes down to Corrin's tower meets up with Corrin Corrin looks pretty much the same I was actually surprised we didn't see Yajirobe I mean if I remember correctly Yajirobe still lives with Corrin in Corrin's tower but he was nowhere to be seen it would have been interesting to see a young Yajirobe a throwback to Dragon Ball days but he was nowhere to be seen although Corrin didn't have the power pole he stated that he gave it to Master Roshi so Goku goes to Master Roshi's place to ask for the power pole and eventually he gets this and returns to Kami's lookout but during his time there we get to see some funny little shenanigans from Master Roshi enjoying being young again essentially declaring that you know he's on the market now he's in pole position to go out and scoop up the ladies so yeah I am looking forward to seeing more interactions with Master Roshi. So Goku returns back to the lookout with his trusty power pole with well mainly Bulma <laughs> excited to see the power pole and Goku does flex a bit with it and it seems like you know he's never been apart from it he does look like an expert again with his power pole so I'm looking forward to seeing you know some fights with Goku using his power pole which brings us back to the old Dragon Ball days and right when Goku and gang did sit down to have a, a great feast guess who shows up Glorio Glorio shows up from the demon realm in his own spaceship and at first Goku and company they were quite cautious and worried about the arrival of this new person you know is he a threat can he be trusted but Glorio quickly declares that he wants Goku's help to stop King Goma and essentially he states that King Goma is a threat to the demon realm. Supreme Kai also backs this up stating that he is a really strong individual a really tricky guy and not someone to be underestimated but how strong can King Goma really be? After all I highly doubt that he's stronger than Deborah after all if he was then he would have been king over the Bora, I would say. And he definitely isn't stronger than Majin Buu, given the fact that he was quite scared of Majin Buu. And if King Goma is weaker than the Bora, doing some slight power scaling here, the Bora was pretty much equal to Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. Super Saiyan 2 Gohan being weaker than Super Saiyan 2 Goku and Vegeta. Then I mean he really isn't going to be a threat to the Z Fighters. Although seeing as the Z Fighters are essentially nerfed now that they're not used to their bodies, they're not really able to access their full potential. Perhaps King Goma is a threat to them at this current stage. So it will be interesting to see, you know, how strong the Z Fighters are right now and how much they do progress to their full potential. But anyway, Goku does agree to go with Glorio back to the Demon Realm and Supreme Kai offers up his assistance as well to come along. And so does Vegeta, although Glorio does shut him down in stating that his spaceship can only hold three people, which Vegeta wasn't very happy about and stated that, I mean, come on, we're all kid sized now, so we should still fit in your spaceship, but no, which was pretty disappointing to me, you know, I really want Vegeta to be on the front foot in this series you know I don't want it just to be mostly centered around Goku and Supreme Kai I want to see more interactions with Vegeta the ones I've so seen so far 
in this episode they've been hilarious with him being a kid as you'd expect likewise with piccolo and some of the others but vegeta isn't able to join them he's going to have to wait around until bulma fixes supreme kai spaceship which will take 10 days to complete but at this point i believe two days has passed so it seems like vegeta will catch up with the rest of them a little later on down the line and that is essentially the end of the episode now i'm not gonna lie to you guys following the last episode which i thought was really sick i super enjoyed it i was highly anticipating this episode but in the end i thought this episode was kind of average you know it was quite a slow burn it was essentially goku and gang reacting to themselves getting turned into kids trying to get used to their bodies you know figuring out what's going on and how to deal with the current situation there weren't really any action in this episode although we did figure out a few new things for example there was some explanation of how dynamics escaped the demon realm and the explanation was that dynamics didn't enjoy being ruled over you know they like to be independent so based on that they decided to escape the demon realm although neighbor dynamic was the only one to stay behind to protect the dragon balls that he created and it was obviously stated that supreme kai originated in the demon realm also but soon left to come to the outer world or to the supreme kai realm you could say and it was interesting finding out that the only way you can get to and from the demon realm is through a special spaceship and at one point people were coming and going from the demon realm but now in the current time you have to get specific permission to leave the demon realm so it's kind of taboo to be traveling to and from the demon realm you need special permission to come and go as you please but that is my video for today guys but what did you think of this episode did you think it was mid like i did or did you enjoy it a lot more let me know in the comment section below. I am really looking forward to the next episode. Hopefully, it's a bit more hyped up, a lot more lively and exciting than this episode, which I'm sure it will be since Goku, Supreme Kai, and Gloria will be going to the Demon Realm. You know, I'm ho hoping to see some more interactions, perhaps with Goma and Degasu, and maybe Neva Dynamic as well. So, fingers crossed. As I mentioned, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you liked my review, please do drop a like. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care.